living memory. Oh, Dave Simpson. First down and more. Griffin on the sideline. He's got it. No way. And then he goes over the middle and a quarter touchdown. Makes him drop the throw. Good time down the middle. Post cannon. Bronco Craig. Touchdown. You're looking down on the biggest house in college football, Michigan Stadium, Ann Arbor. Today, more than 100,000 people will come for an 80th consecutive time to watch the Michigan Wolverines play against the number one team in the nation, the Miami Hurricanes. Miami opened their season beating the preseason favorite Florida State 31 to nothing. Coach Jimmy Johnson, fifth season, 42 and eight. They've won their last 19 road games. They have the nation's longest winning streak at 13 straight. And they come in fairly confident and well rested after having had a week off. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson along with Bob Greasy. Bob, this Miami team, I guess, believes they can win anywhere. Well, Jimmy Johnson believes that these are business trips, not football trips. No family, no sightseeing, no friends, just business. 20 of the 60 players he bought uh, with the, on the trip are making their first business trip. The other thing, he gives them some space, their comfort zone, he calls them. They are the loosest college football team I've ever seen. Now, these Michigan Wolverines had their pride punctured by two points over at South Bend last weekend when they had very high hopes, still do have high hopes for the season, but they're coming in for their home opener now. Boshem Beckler's 20th year. He's won 17, lost one and tied one, and he really wants this one. Psychologically, I would think that the Hurricanes are ripe to be picked because the home crowd is here. The Hurricanes have had two weeks to gloat over that number one thrashing of Florida State. Bo Schembechler wants a slow tempo. He doesn't want to get into a foot race with the speed that Miami has. Well, he can't match him. No, no way. He's got the size. He wants a power game, but not the speed. Miami may be one of the quickest football teams in the country. We saw a quick one last week, but right now the Michigan Wolverines are about to come into the stadium, and when they do, there will be an enormous roar. Bo Schembechler, 175, 45, and 4 in his 20th season at the University of Michigan. And as we said, Miami came here in 1984, ranked number one in the nation, and they got beat 22 to 14 when Bernie Kozar was the quarterback of Miami. So now the roar starts to swell up, and as the Wolverines come into the stadium, they'll all leap up and wrap the gold blue banner hanging across the entry. be right around 105,000 by the time they get through counting them today. Now listen to it. College football is brought to you by Honda, who invites you to experience the new Civic four-door sedan at your local Honda dealer. By Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light, it doesn't get any better than this. And by the U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. We had some rain in Ann Arbor last week and uh, again last night. But the weather today is just fine. A bit muggy, a bit hot. As noted, this only the second meeting between these two teams. That's what happened there in 1984. And the flip of the coin going on down in the center of the field with the referee Jim Kimmerling conducting the flip of the coin. It is a mixed crew today between the Big Ten officials and the Southern Independent officials. Michigan won the toss. They deferred to the second half kickoff. So Miami will have the ball first. And I got a feeling, Bob Greasy, that may be the way Bo Schembechler wanted it. Right now, let's check in with Mike Adam Lee. Well, Keith, I had a chance to uh, go inside Michigan's locker room before the game. I talked to Bo yesterday about it. He granted me permission. 
and it was like listening to a Newt Rockney speech. He got me very fired up. He said, gentlemen, we have the opportunity of a lifetime. We can win this game. We will win this game. Just play your hearts out, play your butts off, and we can do it. It's, you're proud to wear that Michigan uniform. And it was very, very inspirational, so we'll see. He ain't a bad salesman. It ain't surprising to me. I've known Bo Schembechler for a long time, and you know what you see on the sidelines sometimes, Keith, is a little, uh, a little bit different. You see the dark glasses. You see him yelling at the officials and talking to his players. His players and the fans at Michigan love this man. They'd do anything for him, and if anybody can fire up a ball club, it's Bo Schembechler, and I'm not surprised at the speech Mike Adam had just told us. He's got these uh, Wolverines ready to play. After his second bout of heart surgery, he's lost some weight. Looks like a kid bouncing around and says he hasn't felt better in a long, long time. Miami is wearing the white, of course. Michigan it is the home maize and blue. Mike Gillette will kick off. He is a senior from St. Joe, Michigan. Miami's return people are drifting into their position as Mike Gillette puts it on the tee. Number three is Randall Hill, a sophomore from Miami. And number 35, Daryl Spencer, a freshman. position now as they'll set up first down on their own 29 yard line and you can't predict what Miami is going to do because Steve Walsh their quarterback is always given the option of changing things normally you would think the first series of plays would be programmed it is the tailback out of St. Paul, Minnesota, is your quarterback. Cleveland Gary and Leonard Conley are the running backs and both catch the ball a lot and they're very good. The wideouts are Dale Gawkins, Randall Hill, the offensive front, Chudzinski, he's from Toledo, Bruce, Sullivan, Holder, Garcia, and O'Neill. They're not the biggest offensive front you're going to see, but they are very efficient. The line splits offensively for Miami, not very wide, so they get good protection. And Cleveland Gary is hunted down by Alex Marshall, Side linebacker right about the line of scrimmage. But there is a man shaken up on the play, and he is a big man in the Michigan scheme of things. Number 60 shaken up. Gary gets up a little slow, but it's Mark Messner, who is the bell cow of the Michigan defense, who got up very slowly off the ground. Keith, the first two plays, the Michigan defense threw a different look at Miami's offense. They came out in the four-man line. They are normally a three-man line. As you see right there, they are mixing it up very well against the Hurricanes very early in the ball game. They have to take Messner out of the ball game, and uh, that gets uh, that gets uh, a whistle from the referee, Jim Kimberling. And I think what he wants here is for everybody to move back from along the sideline. So uh, now we'll play football. There's the front group for Michigan and the uh, linebackers as you see there. Messner is out of the ball game right now and the defensive secondary for Michigan as Walsh dropped the throw on third down and 10. Throws just over the 40 yard line. And the catch is made by Dale Dawkins who's 6'1", 195, a junior out of Vero Beach. And he reels it in just over the 40. That should be a Miami first down. And a big one, Keith. Whenever you're on the road, especially when you're in front of a big crowd that was all fired up after those first two defensive plays by Michigan, to make a first down, it kind of quiets everything down and gives you a fresh start. I think having to take Messner out of the ball game sort of spoiled things a little bit right there for the Michigan defense. They looked a little confused, and they did not get good coverage on Dawkins to the sideline. So go back to Conley, who bounces off the the football, Michigan diving for it, and they've got it. So Conley took a wicked lick at the line of scrimmage. Ball squirted loose, and the Wolverines cover it. Anthony Mitchell. Take a look from behind the defense. Conley's going to.
going to make a good move. Now watch 88, Brett White come in right there and knocks the ball loose. Conley trying to make an effort to get more yardage. The ball comes loose, the first big turnover. Watch uh, White, number 88. Now Michigan for the attack. The quarterback is Michael Taylor. Let's see what they come out doing. Out of the eye formation, Taylor sets throws on the first down. And the ball is right on the numbers of Chris Callaway. And he just flat cut. And he hit him right in the heart of two. And he had a man in front of him. Taylor, Jared Bunch, the fullback. Tony Bowles, the tailback. McMurtry and Callaway are the wide people. And Callaway wants to go hide right now. The tight end is Derek Walker. Strepanak weighs over 300 pounds. Huzar weighs right at 300 pounds. Dingman, Vitale, and Ramirez. Callaway's out of the ball game, and John Colasar goes in. It's second down and 10. Ball is just short of the 40-yard line in Miami territory. And Taylor back on second down. Pulls it down, takes off, and he's run down from behind by Greg Mark, number 94, from Pensacola, New Jersey. 6'4", 240. He is very, very quick inside. He works with Bill Hawkins, Russ Maryland, and Willis McGee's. The backers are also very fast people from Clark and Shannon, and one of their best, Rod Carter, is not playing because of knee surgery. Barry Harden, McDowell, and Ellis, the secondary for Miami. In. Michigan three wide outs, third down and oh, about eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Taylor has pass thrown underneath for the tight end Derek Walker, a senior from Glenwood, Illinois, and he's got a first down at the Miami 26 yard line. Derek Walker played very well in the ball game at Notre Dame. In fact, he was uh, chosen by the coaching staff as the offensive player of that game. Well, Keith, what Michigan has done both on defense in the first series and offensively is different than what Miami has been preparing for for the last two weeks. Offensively, they came out throwing. Defensively, they gave them a different look. Double Thanks, wide Mark. top of the picture. On first down, Taylor go. goes to Bowles. Tony Bowles gets in there for about two yards to the 24. Here's Al Trapper. The Nittany Lion is purring right now on State College. The Nittany Lion purring because at 143 left to go in the game, Eddie Johnson will block this punt from Boston College. With 48 seconds left, Ray Teresi kicks a 37-yard field goal, and Penn State escapes, beating BC 23-20. No score here at Ann Arbor. Michigan Stadium, second down and eight for the Wolverine. Just inside the Miami 25. Taylor takes off. To the 13 and a first down for the Wolverines. When Michael Taylor came out of high school, he was advertised across the country as being one of the best option quarterbacks around. Only Jamel Holloway, who wound up at Oklahoma, was uh, more highly touted. It's for sure he was the second best coming out. Smart play right here. It's a quarterback draw the entire way. 49 is Crum, the linebacker. As you mentioned, this defense has great speed and quickness, but the uh, draw play on artificial turf is good for Michigan. Just short of the 13. First down for the Wolverines. Ball goes to Bulls, bounces to the outside to the 10. That's a pickup of about three. Maurice Crum, who is a sophomore linebacker on the weak side he'll go off to the split inside he wears number 49 and white right there and boy they just can't talk enough about this youngster well he is uh, he was a defensive southeastern defensive player of the week two weeks ago against Florida State they've got some good linebackers on this ball club he is the youngest he's getting to play because of the injury to Ron Carter their preseason All-American and they may not get him out of the lineup when Carter comes back. John Colasar wide at the top of the picture. Michigan operating out of the I formation. It's Tony Bowles to the five. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Bowles took a lick from Kenny Berry, but Tony put his head down. Bowles weighs in at 190 pounds. Berry at 185 and add all of the energy to that hit. And it was a heavy one. You look at the, the offensive line of Michigan averaging 286 pounds. 
Miami's defensive line averages 254. That's an average per man of 32 pounds that the Hurricanes are outweighed. You know, Keith, the other thing is, I think Michigan is much more comfortable playing on artificial turf than they were last week playing on grass at, at Notre Dame. I think they, they feel better about it. The backs like it better. Miami, of course, plays on grass, but when you win 19 straight road games, you can play on any surface. They brought the chains all the way across the field to check the location of the ball, see whether or not they have picked up a first down. They don't have to get all the way to the three. They're going to be just short of the first down. They can get their first down, uh, maybe the length of the ball short of the three-yard hash mark. So it's second down and short for the first down. In the books, the second down from just inside the four. Just getting underway, and so far, Miami picking up one first down in its initial possession. Michigan's defense swarming. Recover the fumble by Conley, and now the Wolverines are trying to stick it in the end zone and get the early lead. We're at 11 minutes to go in the first quarter. deception in that was it not at all and so it brings up a fourth down Mike Gillette will go for the three points to get something out of this possession and he gets a 22 yard field goal through the heart of the uprights and the Wolverines get on the board so Mike Gillette gets the field goal try and Bo Schimbeck for taking the points instead of gambling taken the position as president of the University of Michigan. All right, the drive, if you can call it that, 36 yards, not that long a drive, nine plays, and instead of going on fourth down and just inches for the first down, Ocean Beckler electing to take the points. And I can never disagree with that. Well, I, I, I think it was third third in inches, but I don't third think inch, it was fourth yeah. in inches. They lost a couple of yards, maybe a yard and a half, so yep. the three points was a good choice. Third in inches. All right, it goes back to Hill, and this time he's at the one-yard line, and again, he's got a little daylight to the outside, but the pursuit this time is better for Michigan, and they shut him down at the 20. Now again, Al Troutwick. All right, Keith, as we told you earlier, Vanderbilt's lost 12 straight on the road in a wild game with Rutgers right now at Giants Stadium. With five minutes left, a 49-yard field goal has brought Rutgers to within one. Back to you. Well, let's see what Miami can do with it as they come from their 20, trailing Michigan 3-0. Notre Dame beat Michigan State earlier today, 20-3, up in East Lansing. So it's sort of Michigan Day here on ABC Sports. That's Cleveland Gary, the fullback, bouncing outside with it, find some daylight. He's close to the marker as he turned it upfield. Trip Wilburn and David Arnold running him to the sidelines, and it depends on where he hit the chalk. No Moving out to the 30 over the 31 for the first down. Keith, I was just going to say, you know, if there's one man on this Miami team right now offensively that you look to stop, it's got to be Keith Gary. The Hurricanes lost seven offensive starters last year. All their skilled players except Walsh. And Gary, the fullback, has been the most productive in the first ballgame. This is Conley. And he's snowed under as he punches his head and over the left tackle. Walked down in a hurry. I asked Jimmy Johnson yesterday how it was that he planned to attack 
Michigan early in the game. We can't always predict what the defense is going to play. I, I'm sure that uh, Michigan's going to play a different style of defense from what they did a week ago against Notre Dame uh, with our passing attack. So we really have to wait until the game starts. And then we put a lot of responsibility on the quarterback in that he can read the defensive coverages and he can audibleize and, and he can put us in the right play right there from the screen. Steve Waltz throwing to the sidelines intended for Dale Dawkins, the same kind of a play that he had picked up a first down on in his first possession. That time he missed him by a foot or so. And it'll bring up third down and nine. Miami in third down conversions on the season, a highly respectable 48%. I think what Lloyd Carr, the defensive coordinator for the Wolverines, is looking for now is something to one of the two backs or the tight end. Last week, Miami, two weeks ago, Miami started out throwing to the backs and tight end. He's forcing him to throw it to the wide receivers. Walsh has good protection. He goes down the middle to the big guy from Toledo, Rob Chizinski. And the big sophomore pulls it in at midfield, and Miami has a first down. See, he caught five passes against Florida State. And as I mentioned, the two backs and the tight end were big players. Trajinski, the tight end. The wide receivers, Keith, are good, but they're new. They, the Hurricanes lost their top three wide receivers to graduation. From midfield on first down, Walsh hands the ball inside. Gary, he and uh, Conley wound up in the same hole at about the same time. Cleveland is lucky to get anything out of it. He's 6'2", 225. He went originally to the University of Georgia and was this thing didn't work out for him up there. So he went back home to Florida, wound up playing at Miami. His hometown is Indian Town, Florida. Well, he wanted to be the next Herschel Walker up there at Georgia, didn't he? Yep. Didn't work out. Second down, seven. tell you one thing they are really looking for Conley aren't they Brett White was all over him Conley is only a 170 pounder but he's got dynamite quickness let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves eight seventeen to go in the first quarter of play Michigan leading three nothing on a 22 yard field goal after they were down inside the five on third and short quickly Gary pulls it in Cleveland Gary shakes two tacklers and breaks it down the sidelines and will score a touchdown no flag he ran right through David Arnold 49 yards well they had a safety blitz on here's the safety right here they're trying to get some pressure on Walsh He's going to sneak out into the uh, backfield. He's going to get him the ball, sneak out downfield, watch the safety blitzes. The man breaks to the outside. There's a little confusion in the secondary. Gary breaks two tackles. I told you a little earlier that he is the main man so far. He puts it in the end zone. Carlos Huerta for the extra point. The holder is Kirk Sandifer. The kick is good at seven minutes and 49 seconds to go in the first quarter. For the big crowd at Michigan Stadium, Miami takes the lead 7-3. quarterback and trust his judgment ability you give him the responsibilities and I think that time it really paid off as Steve Walsh spotted that blitz coming and unloaded it and wound up with a touchdown on the fine run by Cleveland Gary what? Walsh seldom throws an interception and he seldom gets caught eating the ball Here's the kickoff by Edgar Pennis, way back in the end zone. Strong leg, a junior out of Miami Beach, and there will be no return as Colasar accepts the ball seven yards into the end zone.
Weather clearing up now. Some of the residue, I think, from that wicked hurricane drifting up into this part of the country. But it's clearing up steadily as the day goes on. Now Michael Taylor. He came out throwing in the first possession and almost got a touchdown. Turns around and gives it to Bowles, who pops it over the left side. Bowles is a very quick running back down the sideline. He is caught from behind and pulled down by Kenny Berry. Otherwise, he might still be running. We talked about the big, huge offensive line. This is the type of ball they like to play straight at Miami. Miami has got quickness. Now, Crumb 49 has position. He has the outside position, should have made the tackle. Bowles breaks the tackle for a first down. Moves it out to the 36-yard line, a pickup of 16 yards, 7.42 to go, first quarter. 7-3, Miami. Taylor, pass to the sidelines is good. Chris Calloway caught that one, but he was made to pay for it by the strong safety of Bobby Hart. And there is a penalty flag. Flag on the field. Mike, let's check in with him. Mike well, Keith, we talked about the emotion of Michigan, but emotion can only last so long. Miami, by contrast, even after the Wolverines kicked that field goal to make it 3 nothing. Boys, cool, calm, and collected, and as Bob Greasy knows, by visiting with the Hurricanes yesterday in the practice field, uh, no question about their their cockiness, if you want to call it that. They're a very cool team. Downfield against the offense, first down. So the Michigan offense, which made one mistake after another last week in the opening loss to Notre Dame, come out here and make another mistake to wipe out a gain of about six yards. It'll move it back to first down and 15. We did see the Hurricane practice yesterday, and I. I don't, I don't know if I would say they were, they were cocky. They were certainly very confident. And I think that's the way you have to be when you win 19 straight road games. On a little delay to Bowles. Bowles got the block at the line of scrimmage, fumbles the ball on the tackle by Shannon. But the ball bounces out of bounds, and Michigan will retain possession. And there's a gain up to about the 35. State, of course. Uh, Did you see my boy makers there? They were winning 13 to nothing. You didn't even notice that. I saw it. I always say something when Washington I State's you would. doing good. <laughs> you can brag on them better than I can. <laughs> Second down, 11th for Michigan. Taylor chased out of the pocket. The one thing about Miami's pursuit, it is always there, and those people who play in the down position, like Red Mark in particular, can pursue from that down position. You wouldn't think a big guy is 6'4", 240, could wheel and deal in traffic as well as he does, but he's something special to watch. Russell Maryland, the other tackle, weighs 270. Bill Hawkins, the defensive end, at 6'6", six, six, and 260, and Willis McGee is 6'4", 245, so they're all big and tall. It's third down and a long six. Pass is caught by the tight end Derek Walker. First down, Michigan. Bernard Clark almost knocked it out of there. With each pass that Taylor completes, he gets more confidence. The last time he gave up too soon. This time he stays with it, throws it the only place he could. Good coverage by Clark. 57 as you watch the tight end. Not a great route, maybe a little bit of a push off. Clark thought he was probably in pretty good shape, but uh, big completion and a keep the drive going for Michigan. Michael threw him a knuckleball, but he <laughs> reeled it in. First down at the Miami 49. Taylor oh, dropping back, hands to Bowles, and Tony Bowles is going to be ridden down uh, just inside the 47 yard line, and leading the tacklers was Randy Shannon again. Senior out of Miami. There's three fifth-year seniors in that Michigan offensive line, and like I said, they are big and strong. They like to play a power game. They want to run right at Miami. They can't run wide too often because Bo Schembechler said yesterday it's the fastest defensive team he's seen.
eighth, the Boston Red Sox lead the Yankees by five and a half games in the American League East. Dwight Evans led off the bottom of the eighth with a solo home run to give the Sox a 2-1 lead. Bruce Hurst strikes out nine and only gives up three hits. Big win for the Bo Sox. It is third down and six. Bowles has seven carries, good for 37 yards in the game. And now a little different offensive alignment for the Wolverines. They do have some option stuff in their offense. Taylor's chased out of there. He's got room. Michael Taylor to the 32 and a first down. Sometimes, Bob, your pursuit will get you in trouble. This is a defense that they can't block. You've got eight players. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can't block that many if you're a offensive team. Taylor should have checked off. Penetration gets in. Now there's man coverage in the secondary. There's nobody left to cover the quarterback, and Taylor gets out of there. This is what improvising will do for you in the speed of the quarterback. And so the Wolverines have a first down. They go back to Tony Bowles into the middle. The Bowles will pick up a yard or so. Just short of the 30, and here is a penalty flag thrown by the referee Jim Kimberling as he runs into the secondary. Number 48, uh, 49, I guess it is, Crum got tangled up in the secondary with one of the Michigan receivers, and it's a personal foul, and it's called against the Wolverines and called against Miami, so it's offsetting personal fouls there. That defense that we just saw on the blitz by Jimmy Johnson's Hurricanes, he it's something they used about eight times against Florida State. It's the old uh, 46 defense or the Chicago Bear defense they made popular a few years ago. It's a, it's a defense that Johnson likes to use when a team is moving downfield on it. It's a blitz you can't pick it up. Against Florida State, they got two sacks and two interceptions off about eight times they used it. It'd be interesting to see again if they use it in the next uh, three or four plays if Michigan continues the drive. running with Bubba McDowell and no foul McDowell was playing the ball had his back to the receiver McMurtry had him well covered and the fact that McMurtry falls down is his problem well they're both looking back for the ball the only thing you might say is that maybe McDowell ran into him with when he's looking back but there's no way you can call that you know in fact I would say it's a good no call by yep. the official on the scene Colasar is out. Callaway is in for Michigan. Third down and eight. The ball just short of the Miami 30. At four minutes to go in the first quarter. Taylor swings it out to the sidelines to Bowles, and Bowles makes the catch all right, trying to set up a screen for him. But there was good coverage by Miami. 94 Mark is out there in pursuit of the play along with Maurice Crum and Shane Curry. Curry was the guy that was putting the heat on uh, Taylor. But he still got his pass away. Now, Gillette is into the ball game. And he's going to try a field goal, and it's going to be a big one. Where's the win? What win there is will be behind his back. 46 yards. Not leg, but he missed it. He had plenty on it, but he couldn't hook it back into the upright. Three minutes and 49 seconds to play in the first quarter. That's the law squad at the University of Michigan. blue sky now over southeastern Michigan as the Wolverines the home team before more than 100,000 for an 80th consecutive time are down in this ball game with 349 to go in the first quarter by score of seven to three having missed that field goal try for 46 yards Miami gets it back first down at their own 29 and walks straight back to throw it Steve pumps it up in the air 
loops it for Dawkins, and it is overthrown. Dawkins been covered by David Arnold. They're wide open. They always like to be. They move it around, and here is the reason. The offensive coordinator in the middle, Gary Stevens. He's had some pretty good quarterbacks that he's developed at Miami. Kelly, then Kozar, Testaverde, and, Ke and Kozar actually came the same year. And then Walsh. Personal foul against there. There's a look at Gary Stevens, the offensive coordinator. You know, he came to Miami in 1980 when Howard Schnellenberger was there. Schnellenberger left in 83, and Jimmy Johnson came. Stevens stayed on as the offensive coordinator, and the quarterbacks kept coming. Jimmy Johnson really handles most of the defense, doesn't get involved much with the offense. He does a nice job with it. That personal foul against the Hurricanes moves them back inside their 15-yard line. Dead ball foul, so it'll be second down and 25. Give it to Cleveland Gary, and he is put on his back. And the guy that did it is Mark Messner, number 60. Well, Messner is the all-time sack leader career-wise for Michigan, takes an inside charge. And when, you, when I asked Gary Stevens about Messner, he just kind of looked at me and winked, and he says, he is relentless. He never gives up. He's really a little bit undersized, only 6'3 and 245 to play that defensive line. Also on the play, back inside the 12. Steve Walsh will put it up, goes the sideline, and the pass is caught out of bounds, incomplete by Randall Hill. He left his feet inbound, but came down out of bounds, and now Miami's going to have to punt it. And it'll be Tim Palau, who in his own way is quite a story. Palau, junior college transfer from Longview, Washington. He came from Wenatchee, J.C. That's about as far as you can travel. <laughs> it's cross country. He can lot of frequent flyer miles on that trip. Jimmy started chopping around the country because he didn't have a punter and he found him in the uh, ball game against Florida State. He nailed one for 59 yards under pressure. He didn't get all of this one. Callaway comes up, makes the catch at the 46 and takes it back to the 40. Inside the 40. 33-yard punt, six-yard return, and the Wolverines have possession on the Miami side of the field. Two minutes and 49 seconds to the first quarter, and the Wolverines trailing by four, but threatening again. Yep, every flag, every slogan, every piece of color known to mankind can be found amongst this big crowd here. Michigan owning the football just inside the Miami 40. Miami leading in the ball game, seven to three. There is another rules change this year that hasn't become obvious as yet. But you can this year call consecutive timeouts. You can call three in a row if you have three to call. And I would imagine one of these days in one of the traditionals down toward the end of the calendar, we'll probably see it. Right now, the Wolverines trying to get some consistency in their offense. Huzar and Sprepanak are 285 and 320, respectively, across the front. But the guards have not been productive so far for Michigan. What's the reverse? There it is. Bowles has got it. Block on the corner. He's got a man from the beat. He gets a block there. A whole lot of running, a whole lot of yelling, and no game. Well, Bo Schenbeckler, uh, in talking to him yesterday, I uh, asked Bo how he was, had gone about his week of practice. Uh, I got this kind of an answer. We had an excellent uh, Tuesday. Uh, we had uh, a rather ragged one on Wednesday, and I've been mad ever since. So uh, <laughs> if that means anything, we'll see. Well, I'll tell you what, the defensive folks have been playing like they're mad too. Second down at about 10. Taylor will throw it. Has a man, Matt Murtry. And he's got a first down. and he was one of the most highly recruited high school players, athletes. He also had a chance to, uh, I guess he was a Boston Red Sox, so all six, over him. Six figure baseball. Yeah. bonus out of high school, but he wanted to come to play for uh, 
Bo Schembechler at the University of Michigan. Michigan has speed on the outside. We've talked about how big and powerful their inside interior linemen are, but they've got speed on the outside with Callaway and McMurtry. And Bolasar. Bolasar may be the fastest of fun. On first down, double wide, bottom of the picture. Taylor gives it off to the running back, Tony Bowles. Bowles down inside the 24 for a pickup of a couple of yards on the carry. Greg Mark leading the tacklers with Bill Hawkins for Miami. Tony Bowles. Jamie Morris, of course, gone. Having graduated. With him, he took 40% of this offense, Keith, sure rushing did. and passing. He amounted for 40% of it. They're showing uh, what amounts to a 4 3. With that corner coming up, it is Bowles cutting it back into the middle to about the 20 yard line. And they'll be looking at third down and four as Bill Hawkins makes the tackle on Bowles. Miami defense, nine of the 11 players on defense were either defensive backs or linebackers. Two outside linebackers, Shannon and Crum, were both defensive backs in high school that are converted to linebackers now. And two of their tackles, Mark and Pegues, were linebackers and now playing defensive linemen. So nine of the 11 can really run. Third down and a long four for Michigan as Taylor drops to throw it. Now is off one of his own men and will go down at least a yard short of the first down as Randy Shannon sort him out and with help from his linebacker and pals Clark and Brown get him. And Shannon now has to leave the ball game shaken up and being assisted from the field. There he goes. Miami already has one linebacker out and that's Rod Carter, their preseason All-American. Shannon is their converted defensive back. As I mentioned, you take a look at him, but he's the instinctive player, the smart one, the leader on the outside. Mike Gillette is in for a field goal try. He missed wide right for 46. This is from 34. And he missed that one. So Mike Gillette, the place kicker for Michigan, is 0 for 2 from 46. Uh, excuse me, 1 for 3. 46, 34, he's missed and hit one from 22 to open the scoring. And only six seconds remain in the first quarter. Here's Mike Adamley. Keith Randy Shannon appears to have a mild ankle sprain. He's about to have his, as you can see, his uh, ankle, right ankle retaped, and he should be back in the ballgame, no problem. All right, and Miami gets the ball at their long 20 for one snap to end the first period of play. So Gillette now, his confidence shaken a bit, having missed two in a row. Big kick last week to end the game, the last play of the game against Notre Dame. He's the career all-time uh, leading field goal kicker here at Michigan. On first down, Waltz back to throw it. Has a lot of time and dumps it off to Leonard Conley out of the backfield, and Conley's up around the 27-yard line for a pickup of seven yards off the play. That will end the first quarter. So, number one ranked Miami, leading the Michigan Wolverines, ranked number 16 in the country by a score of 7-3 after one. the press area on Michigan Stadium. Picture coming from the Goodyear Blimp Enterprise out of Pompano Beach, Florida. Joel Chamberlain is the captain and pilot. He's from Norwood, Mass. And they are openly rooting for the Miami Hurricanes because three of those members of that Goodyear crew are from <laughs> Miami. And uh, this is Leonard Conley caught behind the line of scrimmage and run down by Alex Marshall, the second solo of the ball game for the outside linebacker. Here's Mike Adamley. 
Well, Keith, tomorrow in the pro circuit and the f professional football field, the Lions will play the Saints. And starting at Free State Beach for the Lions, their number one pick and former Hurricane All-America Benny Blades. Benny, good to see you on the sidelines. Are you enjoying it, and how do you think the defense is playing this afternoon? Well, I tell you what, so far I'm enjoying the game, and I tell you the defense is playing with much more enthusiasm than I would expect. You know, because uh, they got a bunch of young guys who've never played in front of this many people. You know, they're right into the challenge. They're not giving them the points that they uh, need to win the ball game. It's good to see you, Benny. Thanks for joining us, and uh, good luck, Hurricanes, huh? Okay, Benny. The pass a little too high for Randall Hill. Off his fingertips on third down and four, and that'll bring in the kicking team. Tim Kalau, who had a 33-yarder, his first try. I was going to say a while ago, uh, Mickey Whitman is part of that uh, Goodyear crew that travels about the country with the Goodyear blip. Mickey, of course, was an outstanding basketball player at the University of Miami, and he was so high yesterday at peak when he hit the ground. Good snap to Kalau. No pressure on him. Spins it out this time, forcing a fair catch ball by Chris Galloway. And all oh, never did turn over. It didn't go all that far. Four-yard punt. To look at the first quarter statistics, Miami is behind in total offense, 115 to 95. Time of possession big for Michigan. Something that's not on there is where they have started their drives. This will be the third time, for well, the second time actually, that Michigan has started inside the Miami 50-yard line, and now they start on their own 41. Very good field position. Miami starting drives. All four have been inside their own 30, so Michigan has had the best of it, but has yet to score a touchdown. And those are missed opportunities, Bob. No question about that, and those are what you look back on after the game and say, we should have converted. Michael Taylor, the quarterback, gives to Tony Bowles. Bowles spins it in the middle, comes to the 46, and that's a pickup of right at five yards before Jimmy Jones out of Okeechobee. He is a defensive tackle a starter a year ago. You don't lose much when you got to go to a guy like Jimmy Jones. He's an outstanding player. You know, Johnson was telling me the other day that they're going to lose a few off of this defense, but they may be better next year. Second down and five for Michigan. had a scare yesterday on their way to the ball game at Indiana. Their bus was involved in an accident. A couple of people got killed in the car wreck. None of the Kentucky party injured on the play or injured on the accident. On this play, it is Taylor ducking the ball to his tight end, Walker. Walker got into the secondary and kept working when he saw his quarterback scrambling and made himself available, and he's a big target at 245 pounds. When Taylor becomes dangerous, when he steps out of the pocket and doesn't run, but forces the defense to come to him, then he can dump it to his tight ends or his wide receivers downfield. Number 75 there is Vic Skrepinak, 320 pounds, a sophomore from Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. He 
gave me a tumble last year when he's a freshman he showed up. He's only 18 now, but he was born in 1970. This is Bowles to the outside. Puts his head down and gets the first down. He ran right over Canterbury. That'll get him a pat on the back of the motion. I will guarantee you, when you put your shoulder into a defender and right over the top of him, that's Jim Beckler football. Here's Bowles here. Watches a linebacker goes with the, the, the play action. He's going to come back this way. A key block right here by the tight end. A huge hole because he starts to, to our left and breaks back. And with the quickness and speed of Bowles, he got through the line. First down at the Miami 32. Bowles again. And he's down to the 26 for a pickup of right at five and a half yards. Bernard Clark. 57 made the tackle. Well, they're working Tony Bowles, Tracy Williams, uh, the other tailback, and Chris Horn behind him. Bowles now has 73 yards with 11.20 to go in the first half. And it reminds you of the days of Jamie Morris, doesn't yep. it? I mean, the coach calling the plays on the sideline is the same. Bowles calls all the plays, and this is his style of game. He wants to control the line of scrimmage on the ground, he up the clock. Stop him. Michigan procedure call. Another little mistake, but still it's five yards. And it can sap your momentum. I have a dead ball. Illegal procedure against the offense. First down. The Honda Scholar Athlete of the Week. Presented by Honda. This week's award goes to Chuck Hartley, the senior quarterback, University of Iowa. He had 253 yards passing in their win over Kansas State. Honda presents a check for $2,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of the University of Iowa in Chuck Hartley's name. Make it second down and right at 10. Pass is short to Kolasar. Couldn't scoop it off the turn. Dangerous pass, too, because John was pretty well covered by Maurice Crump. That's why the throw was low because Taylor saw the coverage and didn't want an interception and threw it away from Crum. Crum just dropped straight back, just covering anybody that gets into his area. As you see, Ellis 29 was just to the outside, and that's why Taylor threw it in the ground. Third down and still about 10. Bowles is out now, and Michigan will go to three wideouts. Once the fullback stays in, Michigan four out of seven on third down conversions. Taylor back to throw, gets some heat, gets it off down the middle, tight end is good, and Derek Walker has a first down inside the 15. position is concerned and and time of possession and number of plays their defense has shut down Miami except for that one play the yep. safety blitz where Walsh read it and hit Cleveland Gary for the touchdown Michael Taylor has been impressive running quarterback draws and then improvising on plays that that were really th passes downfield and dumping it off to his tight end here a couple but if of plays you keep ago. squandering opportunities yep. Yep. things can turn around Sebastian. Quite a few folks in here. 
with the Miami Hurricanes. And the kind of record they've had over the last half dozen years, why not? Goodness. There's something, uh, I don't know whether it has to do with the clock or not, but the referee has come to the sidelines and is now talking with the liaison man on the sidelines. See now, it's a very pleasant, warm day, and uh, I think it's probably got something to do with the clock. I think they want to restore some time to the clock. So they'll hold up things here for just a moment. Next week, we've got a regional coverage for you, LSU. Winning big today at Tennessee, starting a very tough uh, three weeks of traveling from Tennessee. They go to Ohio State at Columbus next week to play the Buckeyes. And we'll have that for some of you. And for the rest of you, we will have Oklahoma and Southern California. USC is off this week, having come back to win against Stanford. The clock did not move, they say, on the last play. So uh, I don't see any change in it as yet. They're still trying to get it adjusted. Oklahoma Southern California for some of you and LSU Ohio State for the rest of you next Saturday at beginning at 3 30 Eastern time here on ABC. The clock right now doesn't appear to be working so if it's not well I guess they got it going now and roll off the 25 seconds didn't roll on the last one. Second down, call it nine, ball just inside the Miami 12-yard line. Michael Taylor. And I don't think he made it back to the line of scrimmage. He actually had his tight end, Walker, available in the end zone. He had broken three. But there were three Hurricanes pounding at him, and uh, Taylor just had no chance running for his life to see the tight end. The Hurricanes, Keith, are too quick to delay anything wide. If you're going to get wide on the Hurricane, you got to get there quickly. Taylor, that time, didn't get out there fast enough. Schembechler realizes you can't ran, run wide. He's had more success on delays and quarterback draws up the middle, or when Taylor scrambles around and throws a little delay pass. So it's third down. The ball comes back to the 13. Bowles is out. Taylor into the end zone. No! Off the hand of John Colasar. John, the senior from Westlake, had beaten his man, but the pass was thrown just a little too high. Bobby Harden was out of the play, as you'll see here. Uh, John he, couldn't pull it down. Yeah, Michigan gave one away. This free safety in the middle is over here. He should be back here normally. Colasar is just going to run a post pattern down the middle. Everybody is concerned about the right side. Well, you hate to lose those as a quarterback. Gillette is now in for his fourth field goal try. He's one out of three. And this one is good. So now he is two for two, and he tightens it up. It's the seven to six. 9.59 to play in the first half. Crowd of more than 100,000 at Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor.
helps. Put it up. Intended for Dale Dawkins, incomplete. Pretty good coverage that time by Dave Arnold, senior from Warren, Ohio. Both teams, Keith, have had the ball four times. As we take another look at the end of the play, good coverage right through his hands. Both teams having the ball four possessions. Miami has run 17 plays. Michigan, 37. And I'm sure that's exactly the... Uh, the script that Bowl would like to have written before this game started. Walsh is now one of his last five. <laughs> Underneath, Crowell, Shannon Crowell, a sophomore out of Atlanta, gets it up to around the 21. That'll leave him a couple of yards short of the first down. So we're coming up here on a key play for Miami. Here's Mike. Keith, every time number four for Miami goes back to pass Steve Walsh, there's a collective sigh up here in the stands. This is because this is the Walsh family. Mother Molly, Father Bill, son Chris back there. They made the trip from St. Paul, Minneapolis. The question is, how'd Steve wind up in, in hurricane land? <laughs> there it is again. The academics is great for him. International finance. Following the uh, quarterbacks in the country, uh, Pulsar, Testaverde. The question we gotta go short here. We gotta go <laughs> short here. <laughs> Have you sent any plays into the offensive coordinator yet? No, not yet. I, I don't think I could, but uh, they're just holding them uh, back on their game. They just gotta go okay. short. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy the game. Thank you. All right. Thanks for joining us. I have a dead ball, illegal procedure against the offense, third down. See, Michigan didn't have an option there. It was a dead ball call before the ball was snapped, and so it's an automatic penalty. Otherwise, Michigan would surely have declined it and brought up fourth down. Walsh said he always wanted to play in Michigan Stadium. He grew up in Minnesota. None of the Big Ten teams recruited him. He was thankful that Miami was interested, and they are too. Third down and about seven. Six. Six and a half. Walsh again underneath. Gary, the fullback, out of the backfield. Very, very good pass receiver. He gets up to the 29, and he's got a first down between Wilburn and Arnold. Third and seven and eight yards. Watch these two receivers. The tight end's going to come and break to the outside. The trail man is the one he wants. He's going to hit him inside for the first down. Well designed play, you stack two, you got one linebacker there, you read which one he covers and goes to the other one. First down for the Hurricane. Gary. Cleveland Gary, across the 40 and another Miami first down. over the 40 and a first down for the Hurricanes. That was the longest running play of the game. In fact, that play was 12 yards and all of their running efforts prior to that had netted only 11 yards and Gary this time is buried. There was a penalty flag thrown by the referee Kimmerling some time ago. And we'll see about that call but it's almost inevitably against the offense. mistakes here in the first half, but they still lead seven to six with eight minutes approximately left to play. Well, I'm, sure, sure of the clock. I'm sure before the game, Jimmy Johnson didn't think, didn't say that this was going to be a piece of cake. Let's get the call here. From we have a hold on the offense, declined, second down. I'm sure Johnson said that we're on the road, it's going to be tough, things are going to go against us, let's don't lose our composure. 
things are going to go against you when you're on the road and usually do when you when you motivate your players and get them ready to play as he does 19 straight on the road they've got to do something right there's a loss of about five yards on that play with Gary so they declined the penalty holds it over to second down at about 15. it off to Cleveland Gary who outruns number 30 but then gets caught on the sidelines. John Milligan just simply could not run him down. But he is still well well short of his first down so they'll be looking at third and about seven. Both teams a little ragged offensively. Defense on the other hand has been pretty good. Both sides. I think it's the defense that's causing it to the beat. Messner comes blasting through on Walsh. Pass complete to Gary. Run down at the 45 by Arnold and Wolverine. It will be fourth down Miami. Mester came sailing through and just buried Steve Walsh just as he released the ball. That's the first blitz of the game for Michigan. Michigan's defensively normally a very conservative, three deep, don't give him any play style of defense. That time the blitz team didn't give him the time and they got the incompletion. Chris Galloway is standing all the way back at the 10. They've got 10 blue shirts up. They fake it. And it's good for a first down with Doyle Aaron, a wide receiver. And he races way deep into Michigan territory all the way to the Wolverine 21. Doyle Aaron, a wide receiver, out on the kicking team, took the short snap inside and took off for 34 yards. Well, Johnson said that if I get pretty good field position on a punt, I may do this. He worked on this during the week. Snap to the short man right here. The two up men are going to lead this way. A well designed play and a well called play. It takes a little guts to call this play, but a timing play and it was a good play for the Hurricanes. And on first down, they turn and give it to Shannon Crowell. And Crowell will pick up a couple. 195 pounds, stocky fellow, 5'11, and there's a penalty play. Alex Marshall may be the man dinged right here. Got a little uh, carried away. That's a big penalty. If it's personal foul, it is a very big penalty. Michigan quickly, Al Troutwick. Keith, bad news for the Oklahoma Sooners. You know they've been using Jamel Holloway and Charles Thompson rotating at quarterback. Just moments ago, Thompson gets a hit from Darrell Lewis. Pain in the lower back. He's been taken to the hospital, and so the Sooners are left with Jamel Holloway leading by 11 over Arizona in the third. Carrying is Shannon Crowell here at Michigan Stadium for Miami, and he sails to about the five-yard line trying to get that second touchdown in the closing minutes of the first half. Michigan has had all kinds of opportunities, including two missed field goals. The edge and time of possession, number of plays, no field position. Miami has not had the best of anything. They had one long pass for a touchdown. A fake punt got them in this position to score their second touchdown. That's when you know you're a good ball club. Is when you make the most of the opportunities that are presented to you. It's second down. Ball is at the five of Michigan. About four minutes to play. The clocks are wrong. That is not correct. No. 
He's tough. He got away from J.J. Grant and had uh, just enough room to get one more lunge, and it carried him just short of the one. So it is third down. It's amazing what the Hurricanes have done. I mentioned earlier they lost all of their skilled position players, three wide receivers, their two starting tight ends from last year, and their two running backs. Double tight end alignment now as Bethel comes in. Walsh wants to talk about He does not want to let this opportunity slip away. It was 1984, the first and only time Miami had come to Ann Arbor to play Michigan. After wins over Auburn and Florida, the Hurricanes ranked number one in the nation, but five interceptions of Bernie Kosar produced a 22-14 Michigan win. The last time Miami has lost a regular season game on the road. 341 to play in the first half of this game, and you know for a fact that Jimmy Johnson did not let this group of Hurricanes forget Last time they lost a ball game on the road during the regular season was right here. And when they lost that one, they were number one. Keith, this is the 11th play of the drive, covering 86 yards. And the key play in the drive, of course, was the fake punt that got him down into uh, Michigan territory. Cleveland Gary is the deep man. Tracy Waiters is the up man out of the eye. Goes to Gary on the dive. Touchdown, Miami. Watch the surge of the offensive line. Michigan goes low, and Miami's backs go high. The eye formation on the goal line, that's the first thing you think about, the tailback over the top, and Gary got it done. Tracy Waiters did a pretty good job right in front of him, too. He <laughs> went just as high. <laughs> All right, the extra point try by Huerta. And we're right at three minutes. The play in the first half, and Miami leads 14-6. to six. That's the Huron. on the 35 after the score by that man Cleveland Gary Edgar Bennis will kick it off Gary now totaling 71 yards in receiving and a touchdown and 20 yards in running and a touchdown he's been very much a part of the Miami offense that is a high high hanger and it is Tony Bowles And he's out of bounds to kill the clock up at the 37-yard line. Bubba McDowell ran him out. Potential halftime report, scores and highlights. Games being played around the country. You heard a moment ago from Al Troutwick about the bad news for the Oklahoma Sooners. Let's pause five seconds so our stations can identify themselves. Channel 10, WPLG Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Michigan now with time running out in the first half of play. I don't know exactly how much because it's being kept on the field. 37-yard line. Michael Taylor, a little delay, gets a good block to help him out. Throws underneath and the pass is incomplete. Yeah, Callaway was the man for whom the pass was intended. He and Jared Bunch were in the same area. And you see Michael took a lick after he delivered the ball. It was just good coverage downfield. Nobody for Taylor to throw the ball to. You, you got to be pleased offensively with the way Michigan has moved the ball, but not with the results. They've had four opportunities. They've missed two field goals and kicked two on their other two possessions. And so they're two out of four on possessions. They've gotten close enough to try field goals each time. Second down and ten. Throw it underneath the screen for Bowles. Tony Bowles to the sidelines. 
stepping nicely and will stop the clock as he has tumbled down at the 46 on the Miami side of the field. Donald Ellis brought him down. Bill Hawkins is not in there right now. Mike, tell us about it. Well, Keith, Bill, uh, their standout defensive end, Bill Hawkins, suffered a mild concussion. I talked to the team doctor. Billy's still not sure where he is right now. They're going to see how it goes. Uh, they've taken him into the locker room for the rest of this half, and they're going to see how his condition is for the second half. But the, the word is a mild concussion. Oh, It's a big loss. Uh, he won't be back. If, if he didn't know where he was. No, he won't be back. First down, Michigan. A little delay with Bowles and caught by Clark. Guard Clark, number 57. Doing uh, the hunting in the middle, in his middle linebacker position. That would be the position normally played by Rod Carter. Clark stepped in there when Carter got hurt. Crumb stepped up into Clark's spot. And Rod Carter's going to have to play hard to find uh, room when he comes back. No question about that. There's a clock. It's not working. But uh, Bowles, outstanding uh, so far in the first half. 17 carries, 79 yards. Second down. Right at five. Well, Bowles dropped the ball and it rolled right to the Miami man. Looked like just bounced right to it. I think it's Eric Miller. Wait and see. It was a Miami man standing right there and the ball bounced straight at him. Now it's 58. It's Pegues. Pegues. Willis Pegues. But somehow he didn't get it. Watch this thing that goes right right at it. See what happened. Oh, this yeah. didn't ever got it. No. Taylor didn't get him the ball. Michigan lucky to get it back. Bowles saying we don't need things like that. We don't need to stop ourselves. The defense is tough enough. Third down and seven. There's the loss of a couple on there. Taylor loops it for Kolasar. Out of bounds. 17-yard line of Miami. I'll tell you what, if Colasar had had another two yards of real estate, he'd have scored because there was nobody over there. The defensive back on that side fell down. Another big play by Taylor. Takes a short drop. Both wide receivers were over there. You don't see the defensive back who fell down. That's why he wasn't ever anywhere close to Colasar. I'll tell you one thing about Michael Taylor's passes. They may not be pretty, but they've been pretty efficient. Yes, tell me how they get there. Up to 17 on first down. Taylor up the middle. 10, 6. Right about the 5. Now they'll make it 6. That'll be another first down. First and goal for Michigan. And I can't tell you how much time is left at the moment because the visible clock to us is not working. And Taylor is down. He took a pretty good crunch, and he's down right now. And he's going to have to come out of the ball game. Once you time is taken for an injured player, he's got to come out for one play. The first hit came from Bubba McDowell on him as he got down close to the five-yard line, and McDowell nailed him and shook him up. So now he's got to come out. Let's take a look at this quarterback draw again. As Taylor comes to the sideline, what's the tight end who's going to slip in here and get this block on Clark as the quarterback will go back and then come up the middle? This is the man right here, McDowell, who makes the hit. As he shows pass, tight end comes in, gets the big block on the middle linebacker. Wide open up the middle and right there. Demetrius Brown is in at quarterback. He was the starting quarterback last year for Michigan. 6'1", 190, a senior from Miami, Florida. The left-hander is now in on first and goal from the six with one minute to play in the first half. You think Demetrius isn't excited about getting an opportunity to play against the Hurricanes who don't, grew up following? Don't, and, don't uh, tell him where he is. High school. Fly over the horizon. Here. They're going to go wishbone here with Bowles, Williams, and Horn. And Brown at quarterback. His first snap of the ball game. Taylor's shaking up. Had to come out. To Bowles to the five and just over it to the four. Timeout called by the Wolverines. Jimmy Jones and Greg Mark brought him down. So 
we know we've got less than a minute to play. Michigan threatening to close in. Number three, Oklahoma, takes on the defending Pac-10 champion, fifth-ranked USC. Michelob. Michelob is a proud sponsor of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. Now we're told we have 107 to play. Michigan with two timeouts remaining. Demetrius Brown had gone in for Michael Taylor. Now let's see after this timeout if Taylor's come back. He's back. See, when, you, when the injured player, the time is taken for him. He must, by rule, come out of the game. But after that one play, he can go back, and here he is. So he shook off the effect of that collision. And he's in there on second down and goal to the five-yard line. Stay in the wishbone. Still got it. Throws in the end zone. Touchdown, Jeff Brown. sidelines with a timeout to talk about what is apparently going to be a two-point try. Now here comes your new rule. If Miami intercepted, recover it somehow, run it all the way the other way, they can score two points defensively. Offensively, Michigan would like to score two to tie it up, but there's always that possibility this year with the rule change that the defense can score on a try for extra point. We're told we have 57 seconds to play in the first half. It's the first touchdown scored against the Hurricanes this year. Their first game, they shut out Florida State. Well, it's the first touchdown since Oklahoma scored on their fumble Husky in the Orange Bowl game. And they are going for two. They've got trips right, three wide receivers. For the lower part of your picture. You got to look for some kind of a pick down here with three wide receivers to one side. Picks are illegal, huh? Only if you make contact. <laughs> Baylor's getting backside pressure. Run down by Greg Mark. Well, that kid's a heck of a player. He is. He has to be undersized. He's tackle he used to be a linebacker he just saved him two points he just flat whipped that uh, offensive lineman who was it he just went right around it it's the speed we talked about coming into the ball game speed and quickness johnson says i recruit speed and intelligence 14 to 12 ball game abc's college football is brought to you by michelo Michelob is a proud sponsor of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. Well, you live down in that neighborhood, Bob. You know these people very well. You know how dangerous this Miami team is in this kind of a circumstance now. 57 seconds. They got two timeouts to work with. That's a low skidding kick. They didn't handle the last one too well, but this one's picked off by Daryl Spencer with a full head of steam. To the 35 36 fumble. Michigan's got it. Well, 
so much for the danger of it. They cough it up. Now, Michigan may be dangerous in this situation. The big turnover gives them an opportunity. They've got great field position the entire ball game. Leslie Feetner is going to come out of there with it. Spencer trying to make something happen right there at the end. What is that, J.J. Grant? Well, no. Feetner's the guy that got yeah, it. Feetner. So now it's Michigan's turn to be dangerous in the closing seconds. Wolverines have one timeout remaining. Ball is just inside the Miami 35. There's no question that Jimmy Johnson's crew has had the worst of it, and Schembecker's crew has had good field position all day long. Michael Taylor, three wideouts. To the sideline, Callaway. Catch is good inside the Miami 22. Say for a living fact that Michael Taylor is the Michigan quarterback. There is no question that Taylor is keeping Michigan in this ball game with his running, with his quarterback draws. He's not turning the ball over, which is just as important as making plays. He's not giving Miami any momentum going the other way. Gillette's pretty good from this distance, too, even though he has a couple of misses today. He's two for two. Little shovel pass, that's an incomplete forward pass. Safest play in football. That's a smart play, too. He had everybody spread out, three wide receivers, one back in the backfield, you half row, throw it forward, and if it's incomplete, it's just a forward pass. They're trying to get it inside. That time, Jones, number 63, got penetration and uh, spoiled what would have been a good play. Chris Horn was the man for whom that little shovel pass was intended. He's a junior out of Huntsville, Alabama. So it's second down and 10, just inside the Miami 22. And time just about gone. Michigan still with one time out. Taylor takes off to the sideline. And goes out of bounds inside the 20 at the 18. It'll be third down. That young man's got to be tired. He and Tony Bowles. Bowles has gained a bunch of yardage on the ground, but uh, Taylor is the guy that's really kept him in this first half. Polisar comes in with a play, and we're told now we have 34 seconds to play in the first half. Down in about six. I don't know. Now I hear it's 22. It's being kept down on the field. Taylor gets it off into the end zone. Colasar! Touchdown! What a throw! What a catch!
coming into this ball game was all Miami offense and Steve Walsh. That man right there has had the opportunity and has put 18 points on the board and they're going for two. 18 to 14. He wants to make it 20. He went for two the last time and didn't get it. The other points for Michigan having come on two field goals by Gillette. Last time it was Greg Mark that looped around the tight end Brown and got it before he could deliver his pass. This time they give it away to the fullback. Chris Horn takes it in for the two points. So again, Michigan deceives Miami. Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor where the score is Michigan 20 and Miami 14 at halftime. Let's enjoy the Michigan band MacArthur Park directed by Eric Becker a few minutes ago.
Bob Greasy, let's talk a little bit about that first half now with Michigan leading by six. It's, uh, I guess Bo couldn't be happier with a turn of things. Well, you know, that, that pregame talk that Mike Adamley uh, let us uh, share a little bit of what Bo Schembechler uh, was telling, telling to his ballplayers has got to be exactly the way he wanted them to play. He got them fired up. They came out. Their field position has been great all day. They it have has. not punted one time. Miami has not played well. They have given the, the ball back to Michigan on two occasions, and the crowd is in this ball game. As we mentioned earlier, what, what Miami would like to do is get the crowd out of it. That's yeah, not would. the case. Yeah, well, now, Miami turned it over. Spencer trying to get that extra yard on the uh, kickoff return and popped the ball up, and uh, Michael Taylor hooked up with John Kolasar from 18 yards to turn it around. Taylor has been the surprise of this ball game. He has done more in one half than he did the entire ball game last week. Here he connects with Colazar. Not a thing of beauty, but it's there. And he has played tremendous. I, you know, he's the, he's the story of the game so far. Michigan's deception has been pretty good, too. A couple of times they've been able to freeze the Miami defensive people. That's why they lead at halftime by six. Look out in the second half. ABC's College Football is brought to you by the Heartbeat of America. Today, Chevrolet. The big crowd, over 100,000 at Michigan Stadium as we get ready for the second half. Let's check in with Mike Adamley. Well, Keith, the word from the Michigan locker room, very succinct. We're one half away. You know what you have to do. You know, today in college football, these recruiting is high stakes business and a good recruiting coordinator like Michigan's Bob Kamel uh, leaves no stone unturned. There are about 50 recruits watching today's game and the rest of the blue chippers are just a phone call away. Who are you watching with? Your mom and dad? Great. This could be a great second half. Well, Michigan football is thinking about you too. Great. Next week? Absolutely. Love to have you out here. Should be noted that calling student athletes, prospective student athletes during the course of a big game is well within the NCAA guidelines regarding recruiting, and it's a school's way of showing they care. Back to you, Keith. The crowd is 105,834. It is the largest crowd by the Hurricanes that have ever played in front of. 1984, they drew 105,000. 403. But all things considered, uh, almost 211,000 people for the two games that Miami and Michigan have played. Here are the halftime stats. The amazing thing to me is that Michigan and Michael Taylor are outpassing the Hurricanes, 152 to 113. The two turnovers are key, both fumbles by Miami. Total number of plays, 45 for Michigan and only 30 for the Hurricanes. And Bo Ben Schembechler could not have written a better script for the first half. It's Michael Taylor's first 100-yard passing game of his career with a half to go. But those people wearing the dark blue shirts know full well that this Miami team didn't run up a record of 21-1 and on the road under Jimmy Johnson and his coaching staff without having some resourcefulness. It's been this, in this position before. Be interesting to see what he comes out with the, se the second half. He is a gutsy, you know, he was a defensive lineman at Arkansas. He was not a very big man. And his defense, I think, plays the way he played, and that is in a frenzy. Very aggressive, very tough. Jimmy Johnson has been an outstanding coach ever since he's been at the University of Miami. He just does great things. For well, you look around, you know, Frank Broyles has got more players and ex-assistants, I think, out coaching now maybe than any other coach. Jimmy was on that national championship team in Arkansas. Had it Bear Bryant might still have more in number, but it's, it's getting closer. All right, Miami's out on the field and ready to go. And now Michigan deploys. The Wolverines will receive the kickoff. Edgar Pettis, because remember, Michigan won the toss and deferred acceptance of the kickoff to the second half. Wolverines are leading 20 to 14. John Colasar and Tony Bowles are the deep men. Colasar 40, who caught the go-ahead touchdown for Michigan, and Pettis hits it. 
He gets it up well. Forces Bowles to wait at the three. He's got a hole. To the 37. 34-yard kickoff return by Tony Bowles. Here's a look at the Michigan possessions the first half. The right side of the screen results. They have not punted all day long. They put, tried four field goals and then two touchdowns. On the left side where it says start, they started in Miami's end of the field three times. Great field position for the, for the uh, Wolverines. And again, they start with pretty good field position from their own 37. The lineup is basically the same that started the game. Michael Taylor at quarterback. Jared Bunch at fullback. Tony Bowles. The eye back or tailback. Callaway, McMurtry, wide out. And Eric Wolfer at the tight end. With John Vitale over the ball at center. And it's Bowles searching around for a crack, and he found one. Gets it up to the 45. Pick up of about eight yards. Just feel the confidence in Bowles and that Michigan offense now as they come back out. Take a look at Clark, 57. As he sidesteps the guard, Bowles cuts back to the inside. And a nice game. Walker comes out of the game at tight end for Michigan, and Jeff Brown replaces him. Brown caught one of the touchdown passes for Michigan in the first half. Second down at about two. Fair-sized collision as Garrett Bunch runs into Russell Maryland. And will get maybe a yard on the carry. Not anymore. Maybe not that much. Give him a half a yard. Ball is resting right at the 46. So they need a yard and a half to pick up a first down on third down. They got the big people back out there. Walker, Brown. They'll go to the wishbone in short yard. Miami jumps into the bear defense as Taylor options down the line and turns back short of the first down. He'll be a yard short of the first down. Bobby Harden, and it got him number 39, the junior from Fort Lauderdale. I think that tells you something of the way Miami plays the defense. The strong safety came up and made the tackle on the line of scrimmage. You know, Mike he, Gillette will punt. In a situation like this, I think the first possession of the second half is so important. Yes, sir. Both coaches have tried to fire their teams up, and now you come out. If you can get them to turn the ball over, if you can make first downs, it's a big possession. Ah, beautiful kick by Gillette. Angling it for the corner. receiver and running back for Miami since he transferred from the University of Georgia and worked his way out to the seventh. Here's a look at Miami's possessions. They started in their own territory. In fact, they have not been outside their own 30-yard line as opposed to where Michigan has started. Second down and four for the Hurricanes from their own seventh. will put it up to the sidelines to Gary Gary fighting gets the first down so now they got a little breathing room out around the 14 yard line it's interesting 
They backed up. They first series, they come out the second half. They're back on their own one-yard line. Who do they go to? They give it to Gary to get him out of the hole, and then they pass again to Gary. You know, Johnson was saying earlier this week that he thinks that Gary has, may have more potential than uh, Highsmith, who was an outstanding fullback for the Dolphins, and also Melvin Bratton. Two outstanding running backs they've had in the last few years. Steve Walsh has now hit his last five passes going back into that first half. Wolverine flips. Gary goes down. Trip Wilburn, the safety. Wellburn, he's right here. He's a safety. Watch him get into the secondary, the backfield of the Hurricanes, stuffs the blocking back and makes an outstanding hit. Last year at this time, he was a wide receiver. Ball is just inside the 10. We're at second down and 14. Walks to put it up. Down the middle, it is good to Gary. Gary with a move got three Wolverines tangled up and picked up an extra five yards with the juke. It's beginning to be the Cleveland Gary show. Well, he was wide open. The backer that should drop off and cover that intermediate zone was nowhere to be seen. Gary is here. He's just going to go down, sneak across the middle, and he's going to get the ball right in between the linebackers. Watch him right between the dark shirts. Walsh delivers it to him and some good running. So it's first down Miami at their own 35. This possession started at their one. Walsh throws Dawkins to two and picks up nine. Arnold brought him down. You know, Dale Dawkins is a pretty good sized receiver. He stands 6'1. He weighs 195 pounds. Junior from Vero Beach. And Walsh is now seven of his last seven. Well, I'll tell you, if they take it down the field and stick it in the end zone, old Mo is wearing white. <laughs> Steve Walsh for a little while yesterday and I asked him if he's really as unflappable as he's trying to make us all believe he said well you know it's it's working so far so I'll just keep on keep on putting on that show so you know I I just take things as as they go and, and uh, you know being in this big stadium is, is going to be another challenge for him he's a good kid uh, Keith a lot of people say they remind uh, he reminds everybody of uh, Bernie Kozar he doesn't have a strong arm although he threw that ball quite far He's a very intellectual quarterback, and that's the way Kozar was. Third and one. Conley. First down. And then some. He's 170 pounds, but when and there's a penalty flag, I think, thrown over there on the sidelines. I thought I saw a yellow flag go up in the crowd. But Conley, when he was... Uh, in high school was bench pressing 300 pounds so he's a strong 170 pounder. Well they list him at 5'9 and uh, I don't think that he's even that big. I think he's probably shorter than that. Hey, it's a late hit. I think Jimmy saw the late hit and he's trying to help the official out. Yeah right there he says. Big call. Big mistake resulting from overly enthusiastic pursuit probably but it certainly helps the Miami cause because it sends the Hurricanes to the Wolverine 28 yard line first down Michigan leading 20 to 14 Walsh continues to throw it as a man pass is caught by Chudzinski the tight end and he's got another Miami first down inside the 15 Good play calling by offensive coordinator Gary Stevens. He's mixing it up, run some, throw some deep. This is actually a deep pass. He was looking to the wide receivers, but the Michigan zone was deep, so he goes to his outlet, Chudzinski, and gets it to him, and he picks up some positive yardage and a first down. 
And he's from Toledo down the road from Ann Arbor. First down from the 12. Walsh lost it into the end zone just beyond the hands of Cleveland Gary with Trip Wilburn covering it. Take a look at number 60. Mark Messner never gives up. Fights off two players, gets in there and makes Walsh hurry the football. Two more seconds, I could have completed it. <laughs> you don't know what he's thinking. Second down and ten. Dawkins intercepted on the ricochet by Veda Murray. And out of bounds at the 20. Down. Seven and a half minutes to go. 
Michigan Media Hall of Fame, which hangs behind the press box. And among those on that wall, an old friend of a lot of us. Been here a long time. He's about as nice a fellow as you could ever want to meet. His name? Will Ferry. This is the best starting position that Miami has had in a possession in the ball game to give you some idea of how they've been climbing uphill. And Bobby Garcia is in to snap the ball at center. Rod Holder has not come back from the 31. Walsh gives it to Cleveland Gary. And Gary is caught by T.J. Osman, the middle guard, number 94. He's a junior out of Pittsburgh, but he still gets something out of the play. Moves it up to the 35. Almost a four-yard gain. Gary took ballet classes this summer, Keith. It looks to me as though they may have helped. He's certainly moving uh, light of foot around the uh, field today, both catching the ball and running. I think it helps with your balance, your yeah. sense of balance. I think it's a question about it. Would you believe I once did it back in the 40s? <laughs> uh oh. Whistles on it. Hold it. Procedure. Yeah, there's a lot of the media folk here. They're all sitting downstairs with air conditioning, eating chicken. <laughs> We're sitting up here on the roof, paying a zillion dollars. Conditioning up here, is it? <laughs> From the 30, back goes Walt. Gets it off to the sidelines and incomplete. Walt will throw it away. He won't give it to you. Leonard Conley was the intended receiver. Take a look at number uh, 84. That's Chizinski, the tight end. Going straight down the middle of the field. He thinks he's open. Sometimes when you throw the football to the left, everybody goes left and everybody comes open. Third down and about 12 from the 30 for Miami. Michigan leads 20 to 14. Here's Gary. Intercepted. The second ricochet for Veda Murray. Not Walsh's fault. That ball was touched in there as light as a feather, and Gary squeezed between Michigan defenders just didn't look at home. Not at all. Let's go ahead and run it. Gary is the bottom left of the screen. He's going to go straight down the field. Tight end is right next to him. Watch Gary. He's going to come wide open. Ball is catcher, catchable. Another tip ball, another interception. Take another look at it from behind Milligan, the linebacker. Chazinski, 84, draws the coverage. Gary's been catching everyone that's thrown at him, not that one. Murray gets his second. And Michigan has it first down at their own 46. This is Tony Bowles trying to bounce outside. And he does. Bowles good foot speed before Bobby Harden had the angle to get him out of bounds. And they have marked him out on the Miami side of midfield near the 47. Tony Bowles over 100 yards. They have done much better running to their left than to their right. 111 yards to the left and about 30 yards running to their right. Bowles again. That won't get the first down. He'll be a yard short. What is it? The uh, Washington Redskins counter gap play. And uh, ever since they started having this, it's, it's an old play. I mean, it's been around for a day. And it goes, it's a form of the old wingback counter, really. Yeah, you just and, pull uh, two linemen instead yep. of one of the backs. And uh, you're seeing a lot of left-handed football teams running now. Yeah, it's good football play. You got you can't you can't have any penetration on the side that you're running. But 
There's that tendency, running tendency left and right. First down by Tracy Williams, a junior out of Sarasota, Florida. So there are Floridians on this Michigan team, and one of them just picked up a first down. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football next Monday. The Cleveland Browns and the Indianapolis Colts. Colts won the Eastern Division Championship last year, while the Browns won the Central. And poor Marty Schottenheimer just having a terrible time keeping quarterbacks healthy. Don Strzok just signed with him. Steve Slayton came back to him because uh, Kozar down with a bad arm, and then Gary Danielson broke an ankle. Well, he got a good man in Strzok. He'll do well for him. He's a smart quarterback. All short of the 41. And Taylor back. Let's it fly. Good down the middle to Jeff Brown. The tight end. Down inside the Miami 20. Oh, that long march by Miami downfield, only to lose it on the ricochet interception. Seemed to have taken a little starch out of him. Well designed. Here's Brown. He's going to bend to the outside and come down the middle. The man he's going to fool is Clark, number 57, in the center of your screen. The play action holds 57. He throws over his head, and Brown makes a nice catch. Keeps his feet. He scores. First down, Michigan at the Miami 20. Goes to Bowles up the middle. And about four yards before Clark this time, junior out of Tampa, gets it. The Red Sox beat the Yankees 3-1 to one today. Big four-game series. And the Bozox sitting on top of the bunch in the American League East. They're now five and a half. Down here, four Tigers. The Sparky just run out of healthy people. And the Tigers are faded. Second down and six. Bowles. Oh, what a hit. And the ball loose. Yeah. is arguing for it. Won't get it. Kenny Berry, number six, the quarterback, really came in and made a hit. I think that ball was loose before he was down, Keith. Take another look at it. Let's go ahead and run it. Watch him come hit from the left side. Right there, that ball is loose. Oh, sure, it's loose. Yeah. It's a little like a Michigan man might have covered it. Third down, ball is at the 16. Taylor takes off. He's got a first down for Michigan at the Miami 7. A mobile quarterback in college football is worth his weight in gold. He can make something out of nothing, even if he's not a great passer, and Taylor is not a great passer. He drops back, nothing is there. He gets upfield, picks up a first down, and continues the drive, keeps possession of the football. And Bill Hawkins is back in the game, number 54, the big defensive end. First and goal, wishbone to bowl. Stopped at the five. Bernard Clark, 57, got the principal hit. Here's Mike. Keith, actually, defensive end Bill Hawkins has been on the field for all three of Michigan's offensive possessions. We told you that he had a mild concussion in the first half and was knocked out. The Miami trainers didn't want to put him back on the field unless it was absolutely necessary. They have, but he has not been the same player. Well, I'm sure he gets... He'd be able to know his name and know where he is before they put him back out there. I don't think so. Yeah, they wouldn't take any chances. Taylor in trouble. Randy Shannon, number 22, was the man who had penetrated and broken free. And Michael Taylor goes down back at the 13-yard line. Yeah, that's too slow. You can't run anything that slow. Take a look right here. Here's Shannon. Now you got three backs in the backfield. He's going to fake to all of them. And by the time he gets out of that faking, Shannon, who comes through the opening gap, that's just, you can't run a quick, fast defense like Miami's. You can't run anything that slow, Keith. Yeah, a lot of fiddling around when you're inside the 10. Yeah, huh? you, you got to quick stuff. You can't fool around down there because the defense is going to be coming. He 
It is now third down. Next thrown away. McMurtry looked like he wanted to run a post and Callaway to the corner. And the pressure was so intense on Michael Taylor, he had to unload it in a hurry, and he just dumped it. I have a feeling that that young man's going to sleep well tonight. He's been on the ground a lot. That time, didn't have much time to look around as the middle linebacker, Clark, was in on him, and he threw the ball away. It was didn't make a big mistake and give his uh, offense a chance to score three points. All right, Gillette is in now. This is his fifth field goal try. He's two for two. This is from 29 yards. And he drilled it. Got a strong leg. And Michigan builds its lead over Miami to 23-14. And the clock shows, if it is correct, 140 to play in the third quarter. The big old bowl of that armor is coming because the home team is leading. Well, you don't get easy wins in, in Clemson's Death Valley. They got another one down in Baton Rouge. So you don't win easily either. I'll tell you what, here's Clemson Enterprise out of Pompano Beach. Captain Joel Chamberlain. Right now, there might be a little gloom in that bunch because they're all from Miami. <laughs> LSU has got a tough schedule, I want to tell you. All right, Gillette will kick it off now to Spencer and Hill. That field goal by Gillette, very big, because now it forces Miami to end up two scores. they got to score twice. 20 to 14, they only had to score once to get, regain the lead. Now, two. Well, that hammers it. And Spencer gets away from it and lets Hill have it. And the Wolverines let Hill have it up around the 21-22. Time of possession considerable margin toward Michigan, particularly from their dominance of possession and field position in the first half. And they lead by 9, 23-14. Miami goes to work just beyond the 21. Steve Walsh to throw. He's been intercepted in the last two possessions. That one was tipped, and Michigan had a shot at that one. Intended for Chudzinski, the tight end, and Walsh is shaking his head. has come out and moved the ball pretty well the first two series but both ended up in interceptions off of tip balls Walsh with all kinds of time now probably his poorest throw of the day that one should have been intercepted and wasn't tried to force that one. Oh, yeah. second and ten underneath to Gary Gary is caught and wrestled down by David Key, who comes from, of all places, Columbus, Ohio, playing for Michigan. That's blasphemous. Well, Jimmy Johnson hopes it's not deja vu. He was here once before in 84. They were the defending national champions. They were ranked one, and Michigan was ranked 16, and Michigan beat them. Exact circumstance. 14 and 84 it's 23-14 right now. And third and five for the hurricane. Gary down the middle and Walsh missed it. Well, Steve threw two bad passes and that's hers. He did and his confidence has to be a little bit shaken deep because they came out far enough. They had two good drives. They were down near the uh, Michigan goal line and a tip ball resulted in one interception. They got another drive going and another tip ball and an interception, and he threw two poor passes there. He says, what do I have to do? Tim Kalal is in the punt, third of the day. He hasn't hit one, really hit one yet. Callaway is deep for Michigan. Got a little better rhythm on that one. And Callaway will go down. Brought down in a hurry by Anthony Hamlet, a freshman linebacker, 41-yard punt. So we've got 108 to go in the third quarter. 
Michigan has the football at their own 32 first down. Let's go blue ringing through the crowd of 105,834. As Michigan comes up, first down just outside their 32 yard line. star today. Tony Bowles is going to work for us today and he will pick up about two and a half yards on the carry before Shane Curry brings him down. Number 75 is Skrippenek. Weighs 322 pounds. He's blocking on Maryland. Number 44 Curry gets in there and makes the play. There are times when Curry, who weighs 245, is against Skrepinek at 322. He's outweighed by 75 pounds. But he's quicker. Speed against power. Little hand off the balls and a big hole. First down, 45-yard line. Miami got great penetration, but Michigan had the right play called at the right time. year Michigan's offense was pretty good in the Big Ten first in rushing offense to see how they're doing against Miami today Bowles has 124 60 yards more than the entire Miami football team Bowles again and Clark again making the tackle I guess that's 40 yards more. My math isn't too good right now. I need my calculator. <laughs> that's a Purdue graduate. <laughs> no, no, please. <laughs> Got a quarter to go in the ball game. Michigan, 23, and Miami, the top-ranked team in the country, 14. now. They've got one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. They're thinking run. Now, Michigan. Just inside the 38. There goes Williams. And he's brought down by Maurice from number 49. Give him maybe a yard. You know, Keith, not only has Miami won 19 straight road games, but they've won 33 straight regular season games. That's about the seventh longest in NCAA history that is on the line here today also. The turnover has been a problem for the hurricane. And a very angry Michigan football team after playing poorly at Notre Dame and losing by two. And right here, Taylor spends a timeout. 
number three, Oklahoma, takes on the defending Pac-10 champion, fifth-ranked USC. Or number eight, LSU, meets Ohio State, next Saturday on ABC's College Football. Well, that'll be an interesting game next week. Uh, both of them, that uh, LSU winning big at uh, Tennessee, and they're on the road for a second straight week. At Columbus, John Cooper having won his opening game. And, of course, Oklahoma, Southern California, Lordy, the Coliseum may sink. <laughs> Is they going to be sold out? No. <laughs> but I think they'll probably get 90. Now, who moves up? Uh, UCLA, they play Long Beach State. They figure they could be number one, uh, unless this thing changes here. There's a lot of time left, 13-16. Michigan's ball, second down, a little less than 10. the corner, Kenny Berry. I think he was down before the ball came loose. Boy, Berry got him, though, didn't he? Woo. Sure did. Play action away. Here's Berry at the top. And he's going to fake away from him, and he's just going to get in here. This is a real blind sider right here. Michigan is lucky that the ball didn't come loose. As you see, he doesn't even see Berry. Taylor's hurt too. He's limping and he's going to have to come off the field. Last week in that Notre Dame game, we uh, didn't really get it, I guess. Tape machine screwed up on it, but those uh, things bounce around. Sometimes they won't set down for us. Uh, Demetrius Brown will go into the game for the second time. Demetrius has run one play. That was late in the second half, remember, when. Uh, they were down there threatening to score. Taylor set out one play and came back. But uh, Taylor last week at Notre Dame had the most nervous feet you've ever seen. This week he's hung in there pretty well. Right now he's out because one of those puppies is barking. And Brown is back to throw it. Down the middle. Tight end. Walker. First down. Whoa. What a confidence bumper that could be for Demetrius Brown.
to it in a second. Going to kick this extra point. He 
jerked that one out of bounds and he's going to give Michigan possession of the ball at the Miami 41 netting only 26 yards on the punt. So he has not had a good day. Give you some idea how this game structure has gone along how it's been built. This is the fourth Michigan possession to start in Miami territory. The average starting field position for the Hurricanes today has been their own 17 yard line. So the Wolverines have been pretty rough. From the 41 on first down the fullback gets a carry Jared Bunch and he makes something out of it. He gets down to about the 35 for six yards. Fullbacks have not seen the ball much today for Michigan. Well, the story of this game, Keith, has been the defense. Michigan's defense has done a good job. Miami's has not stopped Michigan that much. Two punts all day for the University of Michigan. But Michael Taylor, on the other hand, has been a sparkler, hasn't he? No question about it. Second and four. Tony Bowles, he'll lose. He was going to try to veer it outside, but Bill Hawkins and Greg Mark were both there. And that's a stop, but Mark is down. So the big junior from Pensacola, New Jersey. Shaking up. place for candy rumps out there today because these big people along the trenches have really been hammered at each other. Next Sunday, wheel to wheel, 160 miles an hour, you got it. ABC Sports featuring same day coverage of the Bosch Spark Plug Grand Prix Cart Auto Race. Wow, that's a name. All the top names will be in it. 200 miles, action at 4 Eastern, 3 Central and Pacific next Sunday on ABC Sports. There's Jimmy Johnson done an outstanding job with this program this is his fifth year at the University of Miami they've had two straight seasons of undefeated football four straight January one bowl games and under his uh, guidance the last four years they've raised their graduation rate to nearly 70 percent you see Mark being helped off the field he's a good player Playing at a defensive tackle at 240 pounds these days is a, it's a pretty good challenge because you just almost know that the people you're going to be working against are, are going to outweigh you 30 to 40 pounds. You know, somehow I think Mark and, and Johnson uh, were similar players when Jimmy was a defensive tackle for Arkansas. I, I got to think that Johnson's got a special kind of uh, admiration for Mark. All right, it's third down and seven. And Bill Hawkins uh, comes across the line and uh, let's see about it because Taylor was moving around at the quarterback and might get him on a head bump. Well he forgot the snap count. That's the first first mistake he's made all day. Taylor's 14 out of 21 198 yards and three touchdowns he's accounted for. The last Michigan quarterback to throw for 200 yards would have been Harbaugh back in 86 against Ohio State. Jimmy went for 261 yards. You know, it's it's a the thing about college football, Bob, is that Michael Taylor couldn't win the job last year, and Michigan had a hard time. I mean, Demetrius Brown did not have a good season. The team had a pretty good year, but Demetrius didn't really come around until late. Taylor back, and he's caught, run down by Bill Hawkins, the ever-present Hawkins, and he's going to get back to about the line of scrimmage. It was third down and 13. To punt the ball away, but here in a year's time, Michael Taylor has has gained that little extra edge in maturity that now suddenly he and he's not your prototype drop back quarterback. But I was asking Bo yesterday. I said, you know, if Taylor doesn't do well, will you go back to Demetrius Brown, who started so many games for you last year? And he looked at me and says, I want to see if Michael Taylor can beat Miami. In other words, he was going to go with him the entire way. Yeah. Well, he's that right. He did that last year with yes. Demetrius. Yes, he did. Oh, had seven turnovers in that one game. That ball skips back to Gillette, but Mike gets it out of there and gets a good punt on it. And it goes ricocheting into the end zone. He didn't really have a chance at it. Got to get a little help on the bounce and not straight in. 40 
three yards on it. 7-16 to play in a ball game, and Michigan leads by 16 points. Yep, got his name on it. My old pal Ron Kennan. He's retired as the athletic director at the University of Michigan. What he did in marketing, selling college athletics around this part of the country, every building on this campus, I think, as far as athletics is concerned, produces sufficient revenue to sustain itself. The hockey team makes money, the basketball team going very well under Bill Frieder. Saw Don earlier today, he's doing a lot of fishing. <laughs> and he's, he's a great guy. He's just been terrific. That's pass downfield, good to Dawkins. And Steve Walsh threads the needle on a long one to get a first down for the Miami Hurricanes out at their 43-yard line. It's a hurry-up offense as we look at Dawkins going downfield. Michigan now is forcing the Hurricanes to throw the ball to their wide receivers, shutting off the inside step to the backs and tight ends. This dance ain't over. Seven minutes to play. Walsh back to throw. Got another. Oh, Conley can't pull it in. Just a little off the mark, and Leonard stretching that 5-9 as far as he could, but he couldn't come up with it. And uh, it'll be second down and 10. When you throw the ball as well as Miami does, you can ring it up pretty quick if the other folks help you. But uh, Michigan's going to have to help Miami with a turnover or two or something. It's going to have to go in their favor, and they haven't had a whole lot of luck turn their way so far today because Michigan has just been double tough. Second down and ten. That old quick one. And Conley can't handle it. And Milligan, John Milligan, junior out of Trenton, Michigan, number 30, the linebacker, was right in his face and was involved in his failure to hang on to that little pop. Because Walsh. I tell you, if Connolly hangs on, Ooh, don't look no out. Question. Walsh, an intelligent looky here. There's nobody lined up over Conley. He's going to come straight down, and what uh, Walsh does is just check to it. He says, I'll just pop you right now. Look at the running room he would have had. The only. Milligan didn't hit the ball, but he was in the way. Just enough. Third and ten. Is it good? Yes, sir. He's in bounds just inside the Michigan 45. Andre Brown, number 83. Oh, it's on the Michigan 44, and it'll be a Miami first down. 6.53 to play in the ball game. Here's Mike. Keith, one of Miami's defensive coordinators was on the sidelines trying to exhort his troops, say we need some key turnovers next time. But the sparkle wasn't in the players' eyes, and Michigan has taken it away. And a suburbly conditioned Miami team, they look fatigued. Walsh back. Gets it off under pressure. Down the middle, Chudzinski, the big tight end from Toledo, pulls it in. That's a pickup of 20. Down to the Michigan 24. David Key brought him down. This Miami offense, they sort of remind me of a basketball team. They go in surges and go bang, 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 bang. Well, it's a pro style of offense. They, they do everything a pro team does. And you see this with a good two-minute drill right here. Underneath, pass good. Gained to about the 19. Caught by Cleveland Gary out of the backfield. Pickup is, uh, call it six-yard pickup, second and four. Last time they were down knocking on the door, they turned it over. Walsh down the middle, throws it away. He didn't have anybody. He didn't have anybody. He's very alert, unselfish. He doesn't try to complete every pass. If it's not covered, he won't take a sack, and he won't throw the interception. He came into this game with only seven interceptions in his career. He was 13-0 as a starter. He's never lost a game as a starter for the University of Miami. Very alert, very aware. There's a lot of checking off at the line of scrimmage. Passing by Downs. On a balance, first, second, and third down. Third down. Caught by Kudzinski. He's got a first down. And they'll have him out around the 13. John Milligan and David Key. the 12-yard line. The Hurricanes are back down there knocking on the door again. You know, this is where Miami 
time he was, Keith, at the opening of the half. And I think that the, the key, the turning point of the game was the first two drives Miami had of the second half. They moved the ball very well, similar to this. Michigan didn't give in. They held their ground and got the tips for the interceptions, and then everything's been Michigan since then. Dawkins to about the seven. So that'll be a five-yard pickup, and J.J. Grant, one of the inside backers, senior from Liverpool, New York, gets the call on that tackle right there, number 95. Second down. And that pass intended for Conley, but in reality, Conley was shielded totally, it looked like, by uh, Milligan. He had to touch the ball over Milligan's head. He had and a he chance. Too hard. He had a chance, but I think he felt there was too much risk of interception, and he couldn't do that down here. Michigan is not doing anything defensively. They're only rushing three or four men. They're playing seven or eight men in the secondary and not giving him anything easy. There's a lot of people down in that small area to cover. Third down, that's good. Chudzinski, touchdown, Miami. He beat Beta Murray to get the TD at 5.23 to play. Here he is right here. He's just going to break to the outside as the outside receiver goes down. He's going to hit him with the ball to the outside. Watch as he throws the ball away from the defensive man. Close. In fact, Murray tried to pick it off. They'll go for two. They get it as Walt hits Dawkins. That's a big two points, too. You bet. They're one touchdown and an extra point, or two points away from tying it. With 5.23 to play, it is now 30 Michigan, 22 Miami. Like I said, Al, this dance ain't over. <laughs> yeah, it's not quite over yet. <laughs> Take a look at the two-point conversion. That's critical. If they don't make this, they need two scores. Now they need one. A little slant to Dawkins, number 11. Puts an eight points down and a touchdown and a two-point conversion from tying this game. What do you think about an onsider here? No, I think they're going to kick it deep. Edgar Bennis. Got all of it. Bowls at the two. Pretty good coverage by Miami. Michigan back inside its 15. Just down the road about five miles or so. Eastern Michigan's getting ready to play. Kent State. And well, Mike Adamley has a special interest in this one because his daddy, Dr. Tony, is one of the team physicians for Kent State. You want the game, Mike? Uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to enjoy, have, celebrate my college football Saturday with a little doubleheader and hopefully catch the second half. Kent State Golden Flash, and speaking of all the talent that comes from Florida, I have a great quarterback by the name of Patrick Young who hails from Miami, and it's going to be good to see my dad. Yeah, but it is. Good Crum, now the head coach over at Kent State. Undefeated, and Jim Harkin done a heck of a job at Eastern Michigan. All right, it's first down Michigan from their 14-yard line. Here's where you really, really need the power of an offensive front. Jared Bunch, the fullback, carries it. It's the quickness of Miami against the weight muscle of the Michigan offensive front as we come up on five minutes to play in the ball game. Well, that's for sure. And then you're looking at a man right there that's calling the plays, Bo Schenbeckler. What an outstanding job he has done at Michigan over the years. 20 years at Michigan, the winningest active Division I coach. Second down and seven for Michigan. Bowles gets a hold of the outside and gets it up to around the 20. It'll be third down and four. Maurice Crum and Bernard Clark ran him down. Miami with all three of its times out remaining. Walker checks in at tight end. Callaway comes in. Colasar comes out. Brown comes out. Double. 
go wide now to the top of your picture. On third and a long four. Taylor's pass. McMurtry makes out of bounds. Jimmy Johnson one called makes it the and call. one said no and one said <laughs> yes. He was bobbling the ball. Jimmy was right there and the official agreed with him. The one at the top of your screen says yes. Watch the ball being bobbled. Well, I don't know. I guess it was. I couldn't really tell. It was slow motion, but the bottom, one at the bottom of the screen, Jimmy says it was bobbled. The, man, the, the official on the right says, yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, that's close. Get Jimmy on that side. Right pretty too. good sales job, didn't he? Yeah. Miami's got 10 up on the line, going after Gillette on fourth down. Back to punt. Hold it. Gillette didn't get a very good punt out of it, but uh, doesn't make any difference. The whistle's before the snap, and I think Michigan's going to get dinged for five right here. Procedure against the offense. Fourth down. That means somebody moved. That was third and four. They may have been trying to do something to entice the Hurricanes to jump offside yep. to get an easy first down. Now Gillette really needs a big one. Michigan needs a big one. It's a low line drive. Spencer's back and had called a fair catch. He had room to run, but he had committed himself to a fair catch. Anything he gets Miami the ball first down on the 43. Well, they had a punt uh, block on it, looked like uh, he just was told to catch it. He wanted to get the uh, offense on the field without chancing a turnover. Miami's got the best field position offensively that they've had all day. Now it's up to the Michigan defense with 3 45 to play in the ball game. Taylor throws under pressure, incomplete, in and out of the hands of Shannon Crowell. Mark Messner, in the meantime, planted Steve Walsh, just as he released it. Messner number 60. Ball was right there. Jimmy Johnson was saying earlier that he's got a lot of young players on this ball club. Crowell is a sophomore getting to play this year for the first time. I mentioned earlier that Miami lost both of their backs, both tight ends and three wide receivers. He was concerned coming into the year about the young people. He said later on in the season, I think we'll be all right. That was a critical mistake. That could have been a big play offensively. Second and ten. Chubzinski, the big man from Toledo, the sophomore, has made some big catches for the Hurricane. And it's a first down on the Michigan side of the field. Let's take five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. Chubzinski has caught six balls for 77 yards. Walsh back to, that is not a first down. I called it first, it is not a first, and that pass is incomplete. And now it'll be fourth down and about two as Beta Murray nailed Cleveland Gary and made him cough it up. Michigan leading 30 to 22. Michigan has been pretty much a dominant team throughout the ball game. Miami, the top ranked team in the country, staging a late fourth quarter rally. You know, Keith, there's plenty of time. There's three minutes and nine seconds. Miami has three timeouts left. But this is a critical yeah, Here they got one play. Play, that's right. Fourth down and two. It is Gary. First down at the 30, the 25, the 20. He's on his way. Touchdown, Miami. He wants to hit him, but what? 
watch the linebackers. He wants to hit him right in here. Now stop it right there if you would. Look at all the people that are covering him. He's going to hit it over here past all the linebackers. Two Harry Michigan makes a people got tangled up and yeah. blocked each other out of the play. It was a good wow. ad lib by Walsh and by Gary because that's not where the pass was supposed to be completed. 2.58 to play. Miami is going for two and the tie. Two and the tie. Uh, he went down with it. Yeah. David Arnold. So the try for two points backfires at 258 to play in the ball game. But there is still time. Right here. He wants to go to the man's throwing right in here. And watch, everybody's going to be covered. Look into the end zone. Everybody will be covered. The man he's going to throw it to is at the bottom right. There's nobody open. And he throws the ball, he cuts in front of him for the interception. Good defense. So now Miami must kick it off to Michigan. And the Michigan offense really needs to reel off a couple of first downs. There's the story on that last scoring possession by Miami. Now, I don't know if this means anything or not, but Carlos Huerta is now in, uh, has put the ball on the tee to kick it off. Edgar Bennis has been kicking it off all day, and he's been kicking it deep. With Huerta in there, does that mean they have something else in mind? I don't think you're going to onside it, Keith, because you've got two minutes and 58. You got three minutes to go, and you got three timeouts. Maybe, Maybe he's going to wanna... pooch it or something, huh? Yeah, it certainly looks like an onside. Maybe he's going to pop it up. No, they go the onside. They got a chance. They got it. Miami got the ball. Bobby Horton, the strong safety. receiving team in if they'd have Gutsy had call. a sense that uh, they were going to do that then uh, they'd have had receivers and uh, backs and all everybody well, they else had, they had nine men up there oh, yeah. and Wellborn is one of the receivers and defensive back walks back on first down from the Michigan 47 down the middle it is intended for Chudzinski and incomplete 252 to play there we get down to Walsh now Walsh I mentioned has never lost a game as a hurricane starter he came into this game with seven interceptions on the year, on, in a career. Through two today, both of them were tipped. He has moved the ball club down in two-minute drills to score 14 points. He needs one more drive. Second down and 10. Blitz. Outside, Andre Brown makes the catch. The Michigan 33. First down, Miami. Michigan changed up, Keith. I was just going to say they have not blitzed many times all day, maybe twice. They've been getting uh, eaten up by dropping back that time they blitzed. Protection was there and Walsh threw the open man. Steve Walsh is now 24 out of 45 for 335 yards. Here they come again. Gary running it. Still going with it. Michigan defensive people look tired on that play as Miami's Cleveland Gary hammers his way to the 16. Well, they were pulling the ball. They were blitzing now from everywhere. That's why you see the gap up the middle. Watch him go for the ball here. The ball does come out, I believe. Oh, he's down before it comes out. Michigan man shaken up, time taken for the injured player. 
It's number 26, David Key. Well, it might be too early to vote for the MVPs, but here they are. For Michigan, got to be Michael Taylor. 14 out of 22, 198 yards and three touchdowns. Big day for him, best ever. And Cleveland Gary for Miami, who has scored two touchdowns receiving and one running. Nine catches for 162 yards and 42 yards and 11 carries. And so a check in the amount of $1,000 donated by Chevrolet in the names of those players to each university's general scholarship fund. The Michigan man still down. Meantime, the Miami offense is called collectively over to talk to the coaching staff. And you've got two minutes and 38 seconds to play in a ball game that has absolutely turned around in the last 10 minutes. In the last seven minutes, this has been unbelievable. Shem Beckler and his uh, staff defensively has done a great job all day. The last seven minutes, Jimmy Johnson on the headset talking with offensive coordinator Gary Stevens, who has done a magnificent job getting Walsh ready to play and Walsh bringing this team down the last two drives. You know, they've, they've got plenty of time. They're in with they're within kicking range as you look at the coaching staff right there. Well, point is, though, Bob, their first down right here at the 16 of Michigan, even if Michigan is able to stop them here, they're certainly well within Burgess. But your field goal kicker, Miami lost Miami lost 13 starters and their two kickers last year off their ball club. Their kicker is a redshirt freshman who is a walk-off. He's kicking in his second game in his uh, college career, and I'm sure that Johnson and Gary Stevens, the coordinator, Say, let's don't sit back for a field goal. Let's try to get it in and score. All right, here it is. First down. Lock running. They'll run it. Goes to Crowell, and Crowell goes down just short of the 15-yard line. You want to know how, how coaching is these days? Well, here you've got the potential for a huge turnaround victory. You hand it to a 19-year-old sophomore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and Bo Schembechler experienced that just last Saturday against Notre Dame. They lost on a late field goal. There's no guarantees that Miami's going to make this field goal if, in fact, that's what they're playing for. Second down, about nine. They'll run it again. I mean, there is nothing there. And Michigan... Michigan has called a timeout. Well, they've got to. 1.35 to play in a ball game. Well, there's the man, Carlos Puerta, staying loose on the sideline. Do you think they might change their mind now and for at least one play leave their conservative attitude and stick it and throw it in the end zone? I, I got a question. The way they played the last three series and getting the ball down there with plenty of time left on the clock and three timeouts. And then stopping, get, taking the ball out of Walsh's hand and giving it to a redshirt freshman, Huerta, may come in and kick it. Well, but at least I, I would let Walsh maybe throw some safe passes, and they do have safe passes. They still got 135. Michigan's got the one timeout remaining. They hit one big play, and you don't know what Gillette's going to do. He might get a 50 yard at 42. Well, that, there's no question that part of the theory was to take some time off the clock. Right. They wanted to take some time off the clock. But I would be surprised here if Miami didn't do something to try and make this first down instead of just running it into the line again. Long football game. Third down from the Michigan 15. Well, they give it to Conley. Run it back into the middle of the field. And now it's up to Huerta. And the snapper. And the holder. And the stomachs and nerves of all three. Huerta is a red shirt freshman. Kirk Sandifer, the holder, is a senior. The snapper is a tight end, Mike Pigza, a red shirt senior. Fifth year senior, that would make it, from Willoughby, Ohio. This kid's a walk on from Christopher Columbus High School in Miami. He won the place kicking job in the uh, fall practice before the season started. It's a 29 yard try. Snap was low, the kick is away, the kick is good. The 
Michigan Wolverines with 43 seconds to play. Sandifer, the third team quarterback. You gotta hand it to Johnson, though, to have the confidence in this young kid. He took the ball out of his offense, who had played so well. 19 straight road wins, regular season. Of course, the game is not over with. It'll be tough for any team to lose this ball game. Michigan has played so well. The Hurricanes have played well. Father Leo giving him a big hug. The team chaplain that travels with the ball club. Now Edgar Venice is in to kick, and Venice is going to kick it out of the county if he can. Michigan has one timeout, 43 seconds left to play. Miami scored 17 points in the last four minutes and 40 seconds. The Michigan defensive people just wore out. play or a gimmick you haven't shown well Michigan needs to go time. about 30 yards Keith to get into yep. field goal range for Gillette Taylor has time sideline down catching the ball at the 31 is Bowles they've only got one time out the clock is running Michigan hurrying no huddle 25 seconds this is not the strength of the University of Michigan's game right here Taylor gets it away. The ball is caught by Bowles at the 40. Steps out of bounds. You've got 12 seconds. He almost got over the line of scrimmage. Well, you have to throw the ball downfield now. There's 12 seconds left. You have one timeout. You've got to throw it deep. Either a deep out pattern or a deep square in. Taylor is out. He's now holding his leg. Taylor is out of the ball game, and Demetrius Brown has to go in under this circumstance. Michigan hasn't opened the season 0-2 since 1959. So Demetrius Brown is in for the play. Taylor had to come out dragging his leg. Demetrius Brown rolls right, throws left-handed, sideline. That's interference. Oh, no. They don't call it. Maybe it wasn't a catchable ball. It looked like Bobby Harden ran up his back, but I guess it couldn't have been a catchable ball. Whoa, he hit him early, but he was like out he of bounds. With his body, yeah. I think both players were out of bounds. It was too close for yep. Harden to be hitting him, I'll guarantee you that, if, uh, whew, if the ball was catchable. That would have been 15 yards. That would have put him on the uh, Miami 45. You've got five seconds, one timeout. Brown used a lot of time rolling out. And there's one of the Michigan men leaving. He, the defensive back. Brown shakes him off and throws it. It's into the crowd. Colazar is shoved down in the melee. And the time runs out. And the Miami Hurricanes with one of the most dramatic see Miami comes back in the last five minutes of the ball game to beat Michigan 31. 